Okay guys, uh, I'm giving a brief update as to what occurred this morning in the continuation trial of uh, Cardi B versus Tasha K. Today, uh, the defendant, Tasha K, has uh, finally got on the stand. Yesterday we had uh, a delay because of the evidence of uh, that the defendant wanted to present to the jury. So they had to sort through the evidence and and isolate the type of uh, evidence that they want to get to into the jury, which at least that's what we thought. So today, uh, the jury had to listen to the entire video, the entire, entire audio, if you guys remember, of Lovely T and Tasha K talking on the phone. Now, this is a very long video, and I would have assumed, based on the way the plaintiff's case went, that they would have isolated parts of the video that had some relevance to the evidence that they're gonna put forth. That didn't happen. The jury had to sit there and listen to the entire conversation between Lovely T and Tasha K. Now, here's the problem with that. Lovely T didn't know that Tasha K was recording her and Tasha K was controlling the conversation. She was asking the questions that she wanted she wanted to get a response out of, but Lovely T didn't answer the Lovely T didn't know that she was being recorded, which poses a problem for the defendant because the jury has to listen to this and then they're going to have to take the 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 weight of this uh call based on what Lovely T actually knew what was happening. We do know only one person knew that call was happening, and the person that knew the call was happening was Tasha K because she was the one that recorded the call. So just put yourself in this mindset. If you're talking to a friend, quote unquote, and you find out days later that that friend that you had a conversation with was recording the entire conversation, you have to ask yourself a question. What was the motivation behind that friend recording the call? And then if they're recording the call, then they've already had in their mind how they wanted that call to go. Then they released the call that the friend didn't know that she was being recorded. And she was pretty much being honest in her, and we talk about Lovely T when Lovely T was responding. She was being very honest in how she felt about the situation but here's something that was interesting that happened, and I, and I had listened to the entire call myself. Uh, but during during the call, Tasha K kept on saying, "Well, we knew this was happening." She kept on imp implying that we, meaning her and Lovely T, knew this was happening. And I don't know what Lovely T felt at the time, but she kept on injecting the word "we." We are two black women trying to pretty much uh, do our thing, and we knew this was happening. So the jury's listening to this. It looked like it was a setup call. If you listen to the call and those who have had access to the call, it appeared the call was a setup call. And when she kept on implying we, that poses a problem. If she would have said, well, I knew that uh, this situation was happening, but she tried to pull uh, rail, rail in Lovely T and make her a part of whatever plot she had to be able to bolster the call and I think that that may read different and the other problem I, I think that the defense is going to have is the jury sitting through listening to all this vile vulgar language for a whole hour and almost a half they listen to all this now they're probably wondering why the hell are we listening to all this when Cardi B's attorneys were putting on their case in chief. They isolated the parts of videos, time codes, what they wanted the jury to hear. You don't want to bore a jury with a bunch of stuff and they have to go back to the delivery room and they're going to, again, probably think that, why do we even listen to that entire call? What was the takeaway? 
And when the when they explained the foundation and the way that call started, it was a call that was potentially orchestrated by the person who initiated the call. So that may pose a problem. And I, I'm just it boggles the mind that an, an attorneys or higher attorneys would even allow that type of waste of time for this jury. So I want to read something that I pulled out from the uh, call that the jury heard. So here's here's what's interesting. This 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 call was about Star Marie Jones, and it was about someone else talking about what another blogger I want to say it was a Storm that was talking about uh, the Star Marie video. It has none. It really had nothing to do with Cardi B in the sense that the call wasn't about Cardi B per se. It was about Tasha K trying to refute some of the things that was said by this other blogger, I, I think his I think his name is Storm. Storm. So she says the defense played in the audio where Lovely T and Taja K was talking. She stated she stated that her and Lovely T had a right to believe Star Marie. Listen to that. She said her and Lovely T, again she's including Lovely T in her thought process instead of saying I, Tasha K, had the right to believe the video, the interview that I did with Star Marie was, this is my opinion, but she, she kept on including Lovely T to make her uh, a co-conspirator of sorts for this call, which it came across really, really awkward. And then when you listen to the whole audio in its totality, it doesn't help a case. It really doesn't help a case. And I'm gonna tell you what else I noticed with the jury. When they were playing this, the, you know, remember when the the, uh, the plaintiff was putting on a case in chief, they were taking very detailed notes. I saw some of the, I, I don't, maybe they were resting in their eyes, but they were, they appeared to be kind of bored. And that's never good if they feel that they have something that they can sink their teeth into. So it was very odd that they, the, the, the defense took the chance by playing the entire video. And uh, I, I would just, Again, uh, hope that this they have some kind of strategy for this. But as it stands now, I do not believe that this had some real value for the defense's case. And I would just say that tomorrow there will be a charge to the jury because the judge wants this case to be over with based on the, the way things are moving. So we'll go to the jury tomorrow. Now, where the, when the, where the, where the verdict comes out, it may be tomorrow. It may, you know, they may come back with a quick, relatively quick verdict. You know, because the defense, you know, we have about uh, another couple of hours for testimony. So they, they're going to have to put their case on. And you have to remember, the length of time that uh, Cardi and her witnesses were on the stand, and it was almost like it was a seamless presentation of a case. This, on the other hand, I don't get that energy. So we have to just watch the outcome. And then again, what I tell people is the transcripts will be available at the conclusion, one way or the other. So then you can actually measure the weight of the reporting with the transcripts. You know, only thing you can't get out of transcripts is the color of the court, meaning the demeanor of different people. But I would tell you that it feels very awkward. And uh, lastly, uh, Tasha, now this is the jury shouldn't have heard this. This this is something very interesting. Lovey T said, and she didn't know. Lovey T did not know she was being recorded. She says in the audio, she says, uh, uh, in in the audio, she says Tasha K would do anything for success, and she said as a matter of fact. So when she said that, the the she didn't know that Tasha K was recording her. So this is really interesting. How will the jury view this 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 audio? Because there was things that Lovely T said that didn't help Tasha K's case. There were some things where Lovely T was talking because she believed that she was talking to a friend. She believed that there were some genuine things there. And if anyone remembers in the call with Lovely T and Tasha K, Lovely T actually cried in there because she felt that her friend was being attacked. Meanwhile, her friend was recording her 
to go on an attack at some point. That's what. That's how you have to view that. Lovey T genuinely was crying in this recording. However, what she didn't know was her friend was recording her. And the weight of that can be significant for this jury. And I agree, it was very manipulative. And uh, I just don't know why the jury played the entire call. So you have the entire call that obviously was orchestrated by one party. And then you have the vulgarity and the, the mean-spirited nature of the call. And they listened to this. And one thing I said yesterday in my report is, as well as Ms. Uh, Brittany Dobbins said, once a jury hears something, it's hard to be unheard. So they're running the risk of a, a potential train wreck. I have to go back in. And the reason why I'm recording in the car because it's raining out here and I'm not gonna be recording in the rain and get my phone messed up. I know they said the iPhones don't get, uh, it's waterproof and everything, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm gonna read a few questions before I go in, guys. Someone asked the question, does the jury know that uh, Lovely T didn't know she was being recorded? The jury would know that during the, uh, the, the lawyers for the plaintiff will make sure that that is clear. Because that's going to be one of the obvious questions. Did Lovely T know you were recording her at any point? And then when stats questions asked to the jury, I mean to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the defendant, then guess what? That opens a whole nother can of worms. And then you have to look at the weight of the recall. Because it's almost like one person has the script to a movie and the other person doesn't know what the script, you know, what her, her part she has to deliver. So it's kind of like, why did they even take the risk of doing this? It's kind of weird. I'm going to read a few of the comments and see if I can answer any questions. Now, in Georgia, it's a one party state. They can, she can make the call. But that's not the issue. Just just remember, that's not the issue of uh, if it was illegal or not. Was it morally right for her to make a call to her, uh, her supposed friend when her friend didn't know that she was being recorded? That's what it, that, it's not even matter if it's legal or not because it wouldn't be entered into evidence if it wasn't legal. The point is that one person made a call that you know that her friend didn't know she was making a call to, so the call is being manipulated. You can only deduct, deduct based on that that the friend was trying to manipulate the other friend, quote unquote. That's a good question. Someone asked, do I think the phone call showed that Tasha K was sympathetic to Star Marie Jones? Well, remember, if the call was being manipulated, then the sympathy in the call might have been manipulated. Can we get a one, if you could think about that logic? If only one person was aware that the call was being recorded, and they were controlling the call, can we at least accept the, the, the likelihood that that person could be acting in the call and any sympathy that may could could have been perceived in that call could have been manipulated? Can we? Can I get a one for that? If you don't agree, give me a two, that's all. So I would say, you know, again, I'm not an attorney. I'm just a regular uh, Joe Blow doing my job. I, I wouldn't put too much weight in that, in that particular call. Unless there were some statements made by the, the other person that independently implicated her in something, some type of wrongdoing. But if the person, Tasha K, is manipulating the call, by the questions and Tasha K led the direction of the call by the questions that she was asking and the, and the statements that she was injecting in the call. So it appeared that Lovely T was listening 
and then she gave honest feedback to what she was what she was listening to and she was almost trying to defend Tasha K and Tasha K was trying to get in uh I guess anything that would have pertained to Star Marie Jones and might and she might have known that she not, was she might have suffered from some kind of mental illness but even if that's the case if you know that this person that you potentially are talking about and you did an interview with possibly suffered some type of mental illness that doesn't look good for the jury so that means you you would manipulate someone or put someone on your platform that probably suffered from mental illness and then you manipulated your friend to try to bring her in the we knew this loving team never, never said yes we did this Lovey T never said that. She's probably wondering why she kept on saying we. But if you listen to the whole call, which is available, someone can post the link, someone can share the link. If you listen to the call, you can make your own independent judgment on how you perceive the call the way it was going. So when she kept on saying the we, that, you know, and then she kept on saying we as black woman. I'm like, huh? Anyway, it was just kind of odd. And I would say this other thing, and I want you to think about this. I want to actually say this as well. Think about the fact that this call that Tasha K recorded without the knowledge of Lovely T is actually being used in a trial that can potentially sink her. And I don't think that was the purpose of the call. I don't think Tasha K, Tasha K saw beyond what she was doing to try to she probably thought that she by her manipulating this call. And this is only speculation. This is a this is opinion here. She probably was thinking that if she made this recording, she can use it and share with other bloggers and try to use that as a means of controlling the narrative with other bloggers. Because if I'm having a call, you know, I have good, really close friends. I don't call record my friends. It's when you record someone, that means you at battle. That means you are trying to find something or you're trying to protect yourself, or you're trying to do something where you can use it at a later date. But this call, the way the call was going, it wasn't like a a, a protection call or a, 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 a way of trying to preserve something that it can help you later on. Well, actually it was, but this didn't help her later on, in my opinion. This call didn't help her. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm amazed that this, this these lawyers thought it was a great idea to play this long video, listening to their client, cursing every other sentence you can't say someone you can't even put out the energies of someone might be racist when you are like kind of leading the racist campaign so to speak it's, it's kind of weird but again guys we're going to go back in uh i don't know if i can sit through another long video of hers but i will try to extract some of the parts of the the video that they're playing they're going they're about to play another video 18 minute video but i'm gonna try to extract some of the uh the meat of that video that they're going to play because for, for some reason they feel that these videos is going to help their client and i want to listen to it i want to be very fair and see if there's something that was said that could potentially sway the direction of the case and so far i really haven't heard it but i'm gonna listen to it i gotta listen to it all unfortunately i had to listen to it all and uh and once i do that then we'll come back and we'll we'll talk about it hope you guys enjoyed the coverage make sure you uh subscribe to the page um and just you know shout out to those who are covering it based on you know my reporting if you don't want to give credit that's you know that's on you that's not really on me because it says something about you it doesn't say much about me but anyway guys i do appreciate you guys uh Appreciate the follows. Make sure you subscribe. Go to the Twitter page, subscribe. Go to the YouTube, subscribe. We're going to come back out and talk. And I don't want to do too, too much typing on Twitter because, again, when you want to try to put, you know, just kind of paint a picture of what's happening, Twitter doesn't really do that. You can give quotes, statements, like statements that were made, but it doesn't really give you give you the uh, a, a full picture of what's really happening. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you coming in. Um, let me know what you think. Leave some comments. 
Oh, by the way, I have to say this. If people come on this page and they make just ridiculous comments, your, pro your comments are going to be restricted. No one's really going to see it. And I'll restrict it if it just sounds outrageous or, or if I, I feel that you're just doing this to deflect or you might be a troll sent over by someone else. I'll do that. Or someone else in my, on my team will, will do that. So if you, you might be thinking people are seeing your comments, but once we restrict your comments, no one's seeing it. So you're just kind of yelling in a room when no one's listening. And I, I, you know, it's it's this is my my page, so I can really control that. But if you're making a legitimate, a legitimate uh, comment, I let it sit there if it makes sense. But if you're just saying something wild that wasn't even tech, there was something that wasn't even uh, talked about in the case, something that was so far fetched, I'm not going to put that out there because that's the problem. People don't police themselves. Sometimes you got to be able to police yourself or police your page because if you just leave everything out there, people can get hurt. People can get misunderstood. So we got to police ourselves sometime. I mean, I don't know if you agree with me, but if you don't, hey, that's why, the way I feel. I appreciate you guys. Leave a comment on the page and I'll check it out once we get, you'll get back in, in court. Let me fix my bow tie. And no, guys, I don't sell bean pies. Appreciate you.